Oh, that's great. Good to I see you, Rowan. I want to start off by saying this is an interview with Dr. Jerry Pollack, Jim Robasek, Owen Mullen, and Star Alexander. Uh, of course, everybody knows uh, Jerry's credentials that he's, you know, um, a uh, professor at the University of Washington discovered, you know, water uh, properties that maybe were discovered some years ago, but have been rediscovered now and the applications or the implications are tremendous. Um, Jim is a master herbalist that lives in Vermont and, and works with me and, and my buddy Star Alexander who manages uh, our web and does marketing. And so we're gonna try to make it uh, uh start with just basics and maybe we'll get into some uh some deeper topics later on in, in the conversation but uh it's just an educational video that we propose to put on uh youtube and maybe our website uh for all interested people that consume water and we also want to get into a little bit of uh how water has the potential to maybe create store or generate energy, uh, which I think Jerry has been uh, uh, profound in, in, in discovering. So the first question I have for Jerry today is, you know, there's so many words out there on the internet, Jerry, like yeah. H3O2, structured water, easy water, fourth phase of water, interfacial water, liquid crystal water. Could you like, you know, give us an, you know, a, a brief summary of what you believe this to be? Um, other than bulk water, which I'm sure everybody understands is H2O, but this is H3O2. Sure, I, I'd be happy to. Maybe the best way, um, um, uh, by, by way of introduction, you're, you're absolutely right. People for uh, pretty much a hundred years have been suggesting that there's something different, uh, uh, different from the usual three phases of water. Um, and um, especially prominent in that were people like Gilbert Ling who spent much of his life suggesting that water that's inside the cell is, uh, is different from um, uh, this stuff that I have in my glass here that I should be drinking more of, stay well hydrated. But uh, uh, it's a kind of water where the molecules would seem to be uh, organized in some way that is lined up. Um, and, and Gilbert was controversial to put it, put it mildly, but he had quite a bit of evidence. And also along, along with him, uh, Albert St. Georgi, the father of modern biochemistry, who also knew that the water, uh, especially the water inside the cell was something different and something really critical and important uh, for life. And one of his, one of his favorite, or one of my favorite, uh, uh, comments coming from him is um, he said life life is water dancing to the tune of solids so these these people knew and understood that there was something going on with water that was was different and so anything that we found it, it stands on the shoulders of, of of those giants so let me maybe best I can tell you uh, what we found by, by describing the experiment. Um, we knew that the, when we started these experiments that there was something going on with water that was beyond the or, ordinary three phases. And, and, and so, so here's, the, here's the deal. You take a, a container of water uh, or a beaker of water, whatever, uh, and, and inside the beaker, you put some little particles. Uh, we use little spheres called micro, spheres and into that you insert a solid body and the solid body uh, it could be like a gel for example or some polymeric material the important important feature is that this material is hydrophilic that is water loving which means um, I know you know but uh, I'm not sure your listeners which means if you have a surface that it looks like this and you drop water it spreads out that's hydrophilic surface. And um, unlike, for example, Teflon, where you put the water down and it beads up. And, and we found that it's, it's these hydrophilic surfaces that do what I'm about to tell you, not, not uh, hydrophobic ones. And also not every hydrophilic surface, but many, if not most. And so 
what happens is you look in the microscope um, and sometimes you don't even need a microscope because what I'm going to tell you, uh, it, you can see it pretty much with your naked eye. It's, it's that, that prominent. So what happens is that um, the microspheres start evacuating from the space next to the solid. So you've got a, a, a gel here in the water and initially the microspheres are all over the place and they start moving away and moving and moving and moving. And uh, you have this zone and the zone can be pretty big. It can be up to, we, we see routinely uh, with some solids, we can see up to a millimeter uh, of it. Uh, the zone is microsphere free or uh, it turns out solute free. It turns out to be particle free, whatever. And we started investigating this zone and we found um, indeed that it has special properties uh, that differ from, from ordinary water or ordinary so-called uh, bulk of water. Uh, and by now there are at least a, a dozen of, uh, of these different properties. And let me just, just tell, it, tell you a, a couple of the more significant ones. Uh, the first is, is that there's not H2O anymore. Um, what, what happens is um, this zone that I, I've been talking about consists of sheet-like layers. So uh, you have the solid that, that's sitting here and the water is up against it. And what happens is that the water molecules uh, undergo a, a radical transition and that's from H2O, it turns out to H3O2, what, what you mentioned. The radical, uh, radical transition is that, is that this sheet consists of, uh, it's a honeycomb sheet. That is, if you look from this direction, if you look at the sheet, the sheet is full of hexagons. Um, and so mm. that's the first molecular layer. And then what happens is that first molecular layer, which is now H3O2, uh, serves as the nucleating site or template for the buildup of the next layer and the next layer and the next layer. So you have a series of layers and sometimes there are, um, the number of layers can just be in the dozens or hundreds or so, but more often um, it's uh, tens of thousands and we've seen up to on the order of millions. So it can grow, it's, it's, it can be very substantial. It's not just a, one of these trivial laboratory curiosities. It's, uh, there's a lot of it, but there can be uh, a, a lot of it. So, and, and this is like, it turns out, it's like a liquid crystal and, and that way it's similar to what Gilbert Lane uh, was talking about where he was suggesting that the water inside the cell, uh, that since water has a dipolar nature, that these dipoles would stack upon one another. But uh, we found that that's not the case. Um, it's not a stacking, it's different. It, 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 it's these uh, sheet-like layers that build. Uh, in that way, it's different from uh, what Gilbert was suggesting in, in terms of specifics, but philosophically, it's, it's, it's rather, rather similar. And this is the stuff that, that kills our cells. So a couple more things that are important, uh, I think, before we, before we go on uh, uh, further. The first is that it's negatively charged. Um, the water, H2O, is, is neutral. H3O2 um, is negatively charged because if you had H4O2, it would be neutral. Uh, it's like double H2O, but it's only H3O2, so it's like you're missing a positive charge. And so there's net neutrality. Uh, and so this zone, uh, um, which we call fourth phase of, of water uh, because it, its properties are so different from other, other phases. We also, also call it e exclusion zone or easy uh, water uh, because it excludes. Um, that was a, maybe a, a unfortunate title that we gave it. It was the first observation that was made and it looked like it was a zone that excluded. So we called it exclusion zone at the suggestion of an Australian colleague who said, you know, it's a great name because exclusion zone EZ, although it doesn't work in Europe or other places where it's EZ, it's easy to remember. So that, that kind of stuck uh, and, and it works. So, <clears throat> okay. So I told you about so the what are the things that it excludes, Jerry? Uh, cadmium, 
lead, mercury? Uh, we, we, we haven't specifically uh, studied those, but we studied a whole bunch of different uh, pharmaceuticals, for example, uh, particles of every different size, viruses, um, bacteria, uh, even water molecules. Uh, it, it, I know that sounds bizarre, but uh, we did an experiment uh, with, with this EZ and we poured water on it. The water wouldn't get through the water molecules. So, and the reason, you know, the reason for this is, is, that, uh, is that when you think about hexagons, there are little holes in the middle of the hexagon. And uh, if you've got something that's bigger then those holes won't get through. Right, and so mm. almost everything is bigger because the holes are what a, a, a two tenths of a nanometer or something like that, enough to enough to maybe let a proton go through under the right uh, circumstances, but not even a hydronium ion, uh, water plus a proton. So um, we don't know. We can't say that everything is excluded because we haven't tested everything, <laughs> uh, sure. but a whole lot of stuff is is excluded uh, from it. So, um, but one more, before, before we go on, one more important feature is, is the energy. Um, and you mentioned the word energy early on about water being able somehow to deliver energy, but I'm talking now about the energy required to build up this kind of water. And uh, I think a lot of people know that when you go from chaos to order, um, requires energy. It's like my, my favorite expression of that is, is your office. Uh, uh, you know, you throw a piece of paper down here and a pen down here. And, and after a couple of weeks or so, you notice that your offer, uh, office is a um, shambles full of total mess and you wanna straighten it out, get things organized. You gotta put some energy into it, time and energy into doing it. And so it's the same at, at at the, um, down at the molecular level, uh, this is a well-known scientific principle that if you wanna go, you wanna go from chaos to order, you need to put in energy. Also, if you wanna separate charge, and we're talking about separated charge here, as I mentioned, because the EZ is negatively charged and the region beyond is positively charged. I didn't mention that, but that, that's the case too. It's sort of like a battery. And in order to charge a battery, you have to put in energy. So creating order and charging the battery, both of those uh, require energy. And we were really puzzled for a few years as to where the energy was coming from. You know, you can't take this little chamber sitting, sitting on, the, on, on the bench and, and, and plug it into a receptacle to get your energy. It doesn't, obviously it doesn't work. And, and we couldn't figure it out. There was a student who actually was responsible, a young undergraduate student who was doing what he was not supposed to do. I encourage the students to do that. <laughs> uh, and so he, he's got this little band, little chamber sitting on the lab bench. And he's got, he found a gooseneck lamp sitting next to it. And he thought, what the hell? Took the gooseneck lamp, shined it on the chamber and the light from the lamp expanded the easy enormously. And um, so called me in to see, and, and there it was. And, uh, and I suggested to him, well, remove the light and see what happens. And when he removed the light, it went back down to the, to the original. So it's reversible. And, you know, it didn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that, uh, well, it looks like light, photons, light is responsible for um, photons for supplying the energy to do all this stuff. And then, we did experiments and we found out it's not all wavelengths of light. We studied starting from ultraviolet through the visible spectrum uh, to the infrared. And by far, uh, we found that it was infrared energy that was responsible for building the EZ. So, you know, if you don't have any infrared, you don't get any, oops, is that you? Hey, Ricky. Uh, Well, background oh, music is We're nice. back. I guess that was a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know what yeah. it was. This a, well, it's actually the second time I've been on Zoom, but I can't remember. I was interviewed uh, a year or so ago, but um, now it's back to this screen. So 
Anyway, well, it doesn't we, matter. It's nice to have a little background music. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. That hasn't happened to me before, but um, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so where where do you get infrared light? Well, infrared light is coming. It, it, um, if you were to turn off all the lights where you are right now, so I couldn't see you. I couldn't see your beautiful white hat. <laughs> I couldn't see. Um, <laughs> I couldn't see uh, oh, yeah. sunglasses on Star's hat, uh, et cetera, et cetera, nothing. But if I had an infrared camera that would pick up um, infrared energy instead of visible light energy, I'd get a beautiful image. Uh, and you'd look just as lovely and handsome and uh, gorgeous and beautiful as you do now, but it would be an infrared because you're generating infrared, both you guys, and the brick wall behind you, um, if it's real, uh, I'm not sure. Oh, it's real. It is. It's real. Okay. This well, it's generating. Here. Sorry. We're in an all brick studio here. We we do oh. uh, filming and editing here. Okay, it's so lovely. That's that's how you know I got up to the technology of doing this today. But uh, uh, well, anyway, that's it's very nice. Uh, it's yeah. generating infrared, and so is your chair behind you. And you know that's the reason why the military uses it. Uh, to um, check out the enemy at night because right. everything is generating infrared. So the point is the energy that you need that we found is responsible for building these is around us all the time. Uh, you can't get rid of it uh, in, in any, any kind of practical way, which means that you will always have some easy water because the energy that you need is always there. And if you supply more infrared energy, you get more easy. It's very simple. That's the energy that builds it. And we've seen um, with very simple uh, infrared LEDs that we turn on the LEDs, really weak light and easy can grow by 10 times. It's really powerful. Wow. Whereas visible light um, doesn't, uh, it, it's almost devoid of uh, any capacity to build it. And when you get to the reds close to the infrared, it, it has some impact, but but not nearly what you get in the infrared region. Okay, so I, I've i kind of outlined um, a few of the important things. Number one, to build this, you need energy. And we found in infrared energy. That there are other, other ways to do it. Um, if you ask me later, I can tell you. But basically, it's infrared energy. And, and it builds, this stuff builds next to hydrophilic surfaces. Um, again, there are other ways to build it, but this is, uh, this is typical. Um, and it's negatively charged, typically. And the reason beyond is positively charged. And let me just add a coda to that. The reason um, for this is that for those two charges, separated charges, is that you're starting from water. And, and water has, um, you might think of water as H plus and OH minus. And you put the two together and you get H2O. So what happens is when you put the energy in, the water molecule splits in, into H plus and OH minus. And those OH minuses, they're the culprits that gather together to form these easy sheets uh, that, that uh, build up. So, so um, maybe I should, I should stop there because there's a lot more to say, but I, I, rather, I rather hear questions from you guys.